On this episode of Sailing on a Whim, as we make progress on boat projects, we experience our first fail building the frame for our new solar panels. But we do get our first visitor from home as Chris's mom comes to a visit, so we do our best to show her a good time. Stay tuned. One of the main projects we needed to complete before taking off to our wild adventure was installing solar panels. The idea was to build a frame that would sit over our bimini. We had already hired this amazing couple to help build our spray dodger, and since they had experience working with stainless steel, I asked them if they would also help me build a frame for the solar panels. They had never really built a frame like this before, but with that in mind, they agreed. So I had purchased four Renogy 100 watt solar panels. Each had a hard frame and weighed about 20 pounds, and were also 22 inches wide. So what we needed to do was build a frame that could sport almost 80 pounds of panels and also fit all four panels next to each other. As we got working on the project, we decided first to try to build an angled frame. But we quickly realized that wouldn't work due to the angle of the sun not hitting a few of the panels after a certain time of day. I should have caught that in the beginning. That was mistake number one and far from our last in this project. So after rebending the stainless tubing this couple had brought to try and correct our first mistake, we decided to design a more square frame. But after trying to make that work and after measuring and re-measuring and then measuring again, we sadly came to the conclusion there was just no way that we would be able to fit all four of these solar panels in the space we had to work with over the bimini. I guess I was just gonna have to settle for three panels. And I just hope that would be enough to power all our needs. Um, but can it be mounted to the... So at this point, we also faced another issue. You just can't rebend stainless steel tubing over and over again. So what we had to do is take a break, and we would have to go and purchase more stainless tubing to finalize our design. So the project would have to wait till another day. So far, we were batting a dismal zero for four, and it was costing us more than we had anticipated. Well, so I got another. I got so I got another inch or so clearance from them. Well, I mean, let's put it up and see. Well, we're up. A few days later, and a few hundred dollars more in stainless steel tubing, we came up with a new design for the frame. We knew the design would fit the panels, but we were concerned that the combined weight of all three panels might be too much for the frame. We could only hope that we created enough support for the frame to hold all panels in place while we were underway. So those will go, the pull will go through here. Okay, well, uh, I think this is gonna be one of those days. So, uh, what happened was we put up the frame for the solar panels, and as you can see, they're all up here, right? Looks pretty, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, the issue that we have come up with, the way that we, uh, <clears throat> the way that we anchored everything down, uh, I think it's just too flimsy. So, as you can see, when we, That's, that's just putting, you know, maybe just a little bit of weight on it. So when we get going, I mean, would you want your stuff moving around like that? We spent, well, between adding the, the, the Dodger 
and the frame for the solar panels, uh, we spent about two grand. And I think a good uh, 1,200 of that might have just been wasted. I mean, we'll see. I think the people put the the uh, the really really nice people. They're they're great. This is more my idea. I thought it would work, and it's just uh, the the solar panels are too heavy for. For the frame that we put up so we need we need to do the whole frame because it just will not stand um you know if we're at a you know if we're at a 10 15 degree heel and we got a blow coming in we're going over waves that thing will take the whole bimini out it'll take uh, all some of the stanchions out so uh, um so you know if this would have worked we would have been we would have been Prima, we would have been a few days away from being totally ready to go. Hey, what's so up, everybody? So, uh, Chris's mom uh, is here. She came for a visit before we head out. So we're uh, we just went and did some uh, relaxing, and a couple of people in the marina want me to go and um, they want to get some drone footage of their boat. So I'm going to go and charge up the batteries and go fly some drone for them and get some footage. That'll be kind of fun. Uh, I haven't flown it in this marina quite yet, and I've been here for a month. I should have probably flown it a while, but um, so yep, yeah, uh, put some groceries away and head out to get some stuff, get some footage. Say hello. Hello. So how you feeling now that you're in Florida? Warm. Yeah. Yeah. Does it beat Minnesota? Awesome. I can stay here. You bet you can't stay here. <laughs> As much as we would love to have you full time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Actually, you'd fit. You're kind of small. <laughs> right, look at those things. I could probably just put that in a one of the. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Dan. <laughs> cockpit lockers and just. I guess we could probably take you along. Might be a little tight, but you're fine. I'm fine. Yeah. I could fit in a little cupboard somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So as usual, uh, we got a little happy hour happening tonight on the dock. Everybody's drinking. <laughs> Evenings on the dock are always awesome. They're really a chance for all of us to connect about current boat projects and life in general. The community around this particular marina was so tight and welcoming that we never felt out of place. And it was just a great time for Chris's mom to see what kind of a live aboard life we were here, having here. 46% though. It'd be cool if you had a longer flight time. You could fly right down the, you know, with you, a mile and a half range, you could fly right down the channel. I have, uh, well, I have uh, three batteries. So I just bring it back, pop another one in, so I get about 45 minutes to an hour. So did you get on Wi Fi? And it goes down about 100 feet, comes back, and just lands. So you never really can, you shouldn't ever lose it. At a store? <laughs> He's going to buy his toys anyway. So Good for he you. saves for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let's go around okay. once, yes. I think. Uh, well. Port of the Islands Marina is located just south of Naples in the Everglades. And what we loved about Port of the Islands is that you had access to all sorts of great places to explore. We could get to the back country of the Everglades, the 10,000 Islands Recreation Area, and also the Gulf of Mexico really easily. The origins of this community started when Pablo Escobar built a small landing strip here to hide deliveries of plane loads of cocaine during the heyday of the Florida drug trade in the 80s. From there, it's developed into a small little community of people who want the Florida lifestyle, but with a slightly lower price tag on properties. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. we, need a, we need to interview you. How was uh, your first night on the boat? Awesome. Yeah? Awesome. I love the rocking, putting me to sleep. Yep, it's good. It's good? Cool. I may stay. We're going to get some stuff to mount the. That's where the, uh, the wind generator pole will go and get your stuff to mount it. This will go in the back on the transom. This will go inside the hull, and then the pole will come down through here, and then we'll bolt it. Uh, we'll bolt the pole and we'll bolt this. So got to get a drill bit that'll go through that, and some washers and nuts.
For those of you who have worked on boats or plan to buy an outfit one yourselves, be prepared because one of the things you realize very quickly is that outfitting a boat will include, above all, an infinite number of trips to the hardware store. You go there to help. Same washers. You know, oh, that'll be fine. Measure the pole first. Always measure the pole first. Uh, and if you need fabrication, go to Dan at Marco Island Welding. That guy is a trip. Um, is, do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that guy, that guy's reputation precedes himself. Well, that was nice and easy. Very simple. Um, it's always nice when everything just goes really smooth. No. But the part that we know won't go smooth is the installation. <laughs> After running a few more errands, it was time to enjoy the benefits of having family in town. Free meals. ourselves occupied when we don't have big projects like wind generators or solar to put up. It's things like this. This shelf is stuck in here and I'm trying to get it out. Oh, focus, focus. So they had this nice drink shelf in there, which is great if you're just using this as a cruising boat and um, for the weekends and hanging out or whatnot. But when you're living on the boat, this shelf takes up a lot of space. So I'm just trying to like wiggle it out of there, which I can't. It's just like not coming out. So it's time to take it apart. And I thought it would take like two minutes and it's only been like 10, 15 minutes. It hasn't been terrible, but um, it's enough time to be like, kind of annoyed that this two minute project is taking me 20 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take me too much longer and then we'll have a nice open cabinet that we can use for things rather than just like four glasses. So, <laughs> so I do have a little bit of an audience and uh, I think she's rooting for me but uh, really I think she just wants treats. Donna! Yo. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi. What are you doing? I'm scrubbing down walls. Are you? Cleaning the teak. Oh, yeah. look at that teak. Don't look at this door. I'm gonna. Well, since I'm stranded here, you know. Why are you stranded? I'm stranded because of snow at home. And how much snow? About a foot. So after a long day of running errands and boat projects, we got invited to hang out at a friend's boat on the other side of the marina. So we cleaned up, headed over for some well-deserved shenanigans. Um, this is our friend. Can you see us? Kind How's, of. Okay, this is Dan, Karen. Dan. They're from... Well, Dan and Dan. Is it Wisconsin or Minnesota? Well, I was born and raised in Minnesota. That's all you need to know. Okay, yeah. good talk. All right, so... <laughs> they have their sign up, and they just got it done. It was 100 bucks. Yep. That whole, whole thing. thing. What's that song? Come on up. Up. You don't have to take your shoes off. You can bring them on. And we okay, what kind of, what kind of boat is this? More. This is a Sea Ray 420 aft cabin. Sea Ray 420 and aft the cabin. 420 has nothing to do with whether or not we smoke weed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> True story. From True Minnesota style, we True have... True Minnesota style. Uh, right and, here. Uh, yep, we have Red Wing Brewery. And then this oh, is let's see, we got Red Wing. So that's where we learned to sail, basically, is in basically. Lake City, which is just south of uh, Red Wing. And that's correct. And then, of course, 
Summit Brewery. Summit in St. Paul. That guy right there was a cop for 32 years. Show, show them your guns. Dan. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to focus on you right now. No, please. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Okay. So nicest when, guy I've ever met. When, oh, it's absolutely impossible for him to be an asshole. <laughs> I know. I believe zero of this story. I believe, I believe your freak out on a boat story more than I believe you was a cop for 32 years. You are great. So, so let me Dan and Karen, thank you so much for all your hospitality. Could not have had a better night ever, except hanging out with you. Next time on Sailing on a Whim. With only a few weeks to go before we leave, my parents come to see us off and we start the process of provisioning the boat for our big trip. But before we leave, we take my parents out on the boat for the first run away from the marina, and of course, we run aground, again. <laughs>